Hello, everybody. <clears throat> I am making a video by request. I made some videos for the topic of optimization problems. Um, I didn't make a video for every problem in the assignment because my goal is always to make a few videos to show you how things work and give you a chance to try to figure some other things out by yourself. But if you really get stuck on something, uh, you can always ask about it. I can answer your question directly, or you can request that I make a video. Today, I have to tell you, you probably saw my cat. I've been working all day, and my cat's been spending the day with me. And at the moment, she's sitting on my writing tablet. <laughs> so this is my writing tablet right here. This is how I can make my videos and write on the screen. And she's been spending most of the time sitting on that, so I've had... A little difficulty but I think she's going to let me make this video let's give it a shot okay so here is the problem on my math lab simplified okay if you're on my math lab then you'll have to read all this information and I didn't write out all that information I just tried to diagram it and that's what you see here and I'll explain the situation instead of writing it all out so we need to lay some cable down, okay? And it needs to go from point A along this line right here. And at some point P, it needs to divert over to point C. So we need to get this cable from point A to point C. So we have to go along this line, you know, however far we need to, and then divert over to point C. Now, because of factors that aren't explained in the question, the cable is a lot cheaper to run along this direction than it is this way. It might be because the terrain is easier to work with, or you know, who knows, but that's just, just the way it is. Maybe there are different types of cable and they just join right here. It doesn't say. It's $10 per meter of cable from a to point P, and it's $26 per meter for the cable from point P to point C, okay? And the question is, given that we can make this diversion right here, point P, anywhere we want, where should point P be to minimize the cost of installing the cable, okay? All right, so it's, the thinking is like, well, if they're who knows if you if point P is uh, too far this way, too far towards this point over here, then that raises the cost. But as with all optimization problems, uh, the answer lies in the middle somewhere. That if we go too far one way or too far the other way, we ruin the optimization. So here, the thinking is there's some like spot in the middle somewhere where we divert the cable to run it this way that minimizes the cost. And if you diverted it any to the left or any to the right, it would raise the cost. So that's the idea with optimization problems. Okay, even though they all might sound a little bit different, something like that's happening, okay? All right, now what I need to do is, well, it's with any optimization problem, if I want to minimize cost in, in this case, then I need some function that calculates the cost, okay? So here I've come up with that function like this. It's uh, cost of running cable is 10x plus 26 root 79 minus x squared plus 36. Now let me explain where I got those numbers. Um, we need a variable in this problem. As it is, I, I'm told it's 79 meters across this way. It's 36 meters across this way. Point P is where the diversion occurs. So let's introduce a variable X, which is the length of cable that goes from A over to P, okay? Now, if I was gonna calculate the cost of running this cable, if this portion of the cable is $10 per meter, and if this is X meters, then the cost, at least for this portion of cable right here, is gonna be 10x, okay? 
Now, what's the rest of this stuff? 26 root 79 minus x squared plus 36 squared. Okay, let's talk about that. Uh, if I wanted to factor in the cost of this portion of the cable that runs this way, I would calculate the same way as this. Say I knew the length L, okay? Okay, so say I knew the length L, and I'd say the length from P to C is L, and the cable costs $26 per meter. And what that would be is that this is 26L, okay? Now, but I need, in order to have a function, I need to have it in terms of this same variable X. So here's, what we're, here's how we'll find length L, all right, in terms of X. So let's see, it's 79 meters all across, and we're gonna call this X, so that makes this portion of the triangle 79 minus x, okay? The reason is because if I add this and this together, I gotta get 79. And x plus 79 minus x is, 30, is uh, 79, okay? All right, now next thing. I've got a triangle where I know this side to be 79 minus x and this side to be 36. And I want to find this side, remember, because if this side is length L, whatever that happens to be, then the cost of this portion of cable is 26 times L. So to do that, we need something called the Pythagorean theorem. It's a theorem for right triangles. See, this angle right here is 90 degrees. And we are dealing with a right triangle in this problem. Okay, in a right triangle, the side opposite of the 90 degree angle is called the hypotenuse. And the way the lengths of the sides always have to work out is that this side squared plus this side squared has to be equal to this side squared. So a squared plus b squared is c squared. a squared plus b squared has to be equal to the hypotenuse, the side across from the right angle squared. Now, if say you knew side A and B and wanted to find side C, then you would find side C as the square root of A squared plus B squared. You know, you would solve for it like that, okay? Now, so that's what I need to do here. I need to know the length of this portion of cable. I know that this side is 36 meters. And this side is 79 minus x meters. So that means that this would be the square root of 79 minus x squared plus 36 squared. Okay? That's how I get this in my cost function. $26 per meter and then the length of that portion of cable is the square root of 79 minus x squared plus 36 squared. Okay, so there we go. There's our cost function. That's what we want to minimize. I needed some formula for it. I knew going into this that I was going to minimize the cost. I need some formula to calculate what the cost is. And once I have that, what do you do? Uh, say you have some formula for whatever you want to minimize or maximize. Optimization problems um, are about minimizing or maximizing something, okay? So, okay, you've got your formula. This, this will calculate the cost. How do you minimize it? Well, the minimum cost will be found as the solution to the derivative being zero. Okay, so that's how you do it. Right, minimum or maximum, okay? Or we're looking for a minimum, but if it was some other problem and we're looking for a maximum, it would be the same thing, okay? All right, so here's my cost function. I decided to write it also like this. I wrote the square root as a one-half power because I'll need to find the derivative and the rules are a little more applicable if I have an exponent there, okay? All right, now let's go here. Let's go, let's go to this part where I'm gonna say now I want to solve 
c prime is equal to zero. So here's the cost. I need to find the derivative of that. So here's how we do that. So derivative of 10x is just 10. That one's not so bad. For this right here, I have to use the chain rule. Oops. That's very messy writing, but that says chain rule. Okay. And the chain rule would be like the derivative with respect to x of some function formula u to the n power is n times u to the n minus 1 power times u prime. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. So I carry my coefficient 26 down, bring that exponent to the front, subtract 1 from it, and I get negative 1 half. And then I need to find the derivative of this inside part. Uh, I have to use the chain rule again for that. So the derivative of 79 minus x all squared, I would bring the 2 down, subtract 1 from the power, and what would that be? 2 minus 1 is 1. Okay, so I get 2 times 79 minus x to the first power. And then what's the derivative of that inside thing? What's, what's the u prime? The derivative of 79 minus x is negative 1. Okay plus 36 squared. What's the derivative of 36 squared? Well, the derivative of a constant is always zero. So, so here's how the chain rule completes itself. All right. Now, what I did from there is I, I saw this two cancels with this two. I'll have a negative and a 26. So there's the negative, there's the 26. I'll have this 79 minus x. And this negative exponent would send this root down to the bottom. All right, so there, right there, there's the derivative, okay? Now, I need to solve that equal to zero. Before I do that, I, I want to show you something at, as a companion to this, okay? Because this problem has a lot of algebra, and sometimes we'll run into that, okay? So I want to show you something. Uh, I use this sometimes. You know, I certainly I write a lot of the algebra out, as you see here, but... You know, sometimes it's good to use this. I One thing that's an option uh, is to take our function. Look what I did. This is wolframalpha.com, okay? And I typed in my function. C is 10x plus 26, and you have to use some syntax for Wolfram Alpha, but for square root, I, wrote, I, I write SQRT, 79 minus x squared plus 36 squared, okay? And if I type that in and press enter, it tells me all kinds of information about that function, okay? It'll give me its graph and say, wait, I was looking for the minimum and it's, it looks like it's gonna be like a little more than 60. You know, I see that low spot right there. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. So I get the graph, I kind of do it that way. I mean, I can't really tell what exactly the minimum is from this picture, but it looks like it's a little more than 60. Um, it will tell you all kinds of things that are beyond our class, and it will tell you what the minimum is. All right, so it's telling me that the minimum that I was looking for is 64. All right, so we do have technology that will, as long as you can come up with this function, it will tell you the answer, all right? So 64 is going to be the answer. What you want is you want to divert this cable 64 meters from point A. So you want to run the cable from point A 64 meters this way, then divert it directly over to point C. That will minimize the cost of installing the cable, given that it's $10 per meter here and it's $26 per meter there. So that's our answer. Now, um, the technologies out there, I, I'm not against you using technology. But at the same time, like I'm obligated to find a middle ground in our class. So I don't mind if when you're taking the test or doing your homework, if you use technology, I, I don't want you to, to use it to do every single step. So if you wanted to do use something like this to do some of the steps, like say right here, I need to figure out um, how to square all this and what that is, then you could use this program, Wolfram Alpha, to do that. But let me show you when I get there, okay? So I've got my derivative, okay? All right, and I need to solve it for zero. So what I did 
was I said, I'll move this term over here and then I'll cross multiply. So I'll get like 10 equals 26, 79 minus X over root 79 minus X squared plus 36 squared. Okay. So I'll, I'll go from here to here and then I'll multiply this on both sides and it'll give me 10 times root 79 minus x squared plus 36 squared equals 26 times 79 minus x. Okay, now still I've got a lot of equations to solve and this is where I don't mind if you do some of the steps with a calcul an algebraic calculator. So what I would do from here is this. I've got the square root and that that's going to make things difficult for me, okay? Like the stuff in the root is just trapped there. So I have to find a way to get rid of the square root. So I'll do this. I'll think like, well, when I solve an equation, I can, I can do what I want to it for the most part, as long as I do the same thing to both sides. So what I would do if the square root is in the way is I would square both sides. That would cancel the square root. Okay. And to do this part, you know, because I'd like to see you track the steps on paper. I'm not, I'm not wanting you to necessarily uh, square all this out by hand with only a, a calculator. It's fine if you, if you did something like this. Say, say I want to know what's, what is uh, 26 uh, times 79 minus x squared. Okay, I could do like this. Type it in here. Uh, so what was it? 26 times 79 minus x squared. So here would be the syntax for me to type that in. And then I press enter and it will tell me, it'll tell me a lot of stuff, but, but there it is, 676x squared, okay, look at that, minus uh, 106,808x plus 42,189,16, right? There's that number. And you could do the same thing with this side over here if you want to. I just want to see on your paper when you turn in the work that you're tracking the steps, okay? So no, you don't have to do the immense amount of algebra that it would take to get from here to there all yourself. You can use some kind of algebraic calculator like Wolfram Alpha to, to do this step, all right? There's a lot of work in that step. So, okay, so we, we get from here to there, all right, and it's totally okay to use an algebraic calculator. Now, the rest of it's not as bad. I get between this equation and both sides, I get a quadratic equation. If I take all these terms and move them to the right, I get this, okay? And then that's a quadratic equation. I use the quadratic formula. In this part, I, I did with just my handheld calculator. The hardest part that I use Wolfram Alpha for was right here. Okay, so there we go. Uh, reduced it, I got two answers. I got 94 and 64. Well, we already knew 64 was the answer because I showed you that. But what about the 94? I guess like technically, you know, 94 is an answer to this equation, but it wouldn't make any sense in the problem because, you know, it's only 79 meters from point A to point B. So you can't run the cable 94 meters that way. It, it just doesn't work. It's too far. Okay. So that's why I can throw this one out. It's, it's not sensible in the context of our problem, but there's that answer that we were expecting. Okay. All right. So let me uh, give my answer like in an official way. Uh, so point P, you know, this point right there, point P is going to be at X being the distance from A to P equals 64 meters. Okay. So that's what I have in mind for you for this problem if this problem should show up on the test or one like it and you turn in it's one of the problems you have to turn your work in then i want to see that function for whatever you're minimizing or maximizing i'd like to see most of the steps 
Uh, it's fine if you use an algebraic calculator for some of them. All right, I told you about that, perfectly okay. And of course, I wanna see some statement about the answer that you may have worked it out and you got two numbers, but you're only taking one of them and you know some claim about what used to say the final answer is like this. Okay, all right, so that's how to approach that one. Um, and like I said, if you get stuck with anything else on any assignment, let me know. I'll either make a video or answer you directly. Uh, and otherwise, I'm happy to help any way I can.